Welcome everyone. Um, this is Dr. Peter Chu again, and I'm a urologist from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. Welcome again to the first Asian series of uh, Grand Rounds in Urology. Um, this is a series with a group of Asian experts to talk about important urology topics from an Asian perspective. And today we are honored to have a Professor Sunao Soji from Tokyo, Japan, um, to tell us of something about a haifu. Professor Soji graduated from the Tokyo Medical University, actually the top university um, in, in Asia, uh, in the School of Medicine. And he subsequently was uh, bought certified as a um, urologist. And he actually furthered his training in the US in uh, the Department of Urology in the Univers University of Southern California, Los Angeles, and, and um, as a research fellow and also obtained a PhD. And interestingly, he is even uh, obtained the Master of Business Administration of the MBA in healthcare recently. He's currently the Associate Professor in the Department of Urology in Tokai University School of Medicine. Over the years, he has received numerous awards, uh, including um, at least four uh, best uh, posters of videos in EAU and AUA meetings. And uh, last year, he received uh, two um, urology awards from the Japanese Urological Association and the Japanese Society of Endourology. And Professor Shoji is a true expert in minimal invasive surgery, and uh, and in particular, the MRI trust fusion image guided biopsy with more than 1,100 cases uh, under his name. And he's also one of the first uh, high pure users in Asia. Um, and uh, he has experience of um, more than 200 cases so far. And definitely um, in, in Asia, which is a very, uh, I mean, in which focal therapy is not commonly done, he's a true expert in this field. So Professor Shoji, we're honored to have you to give a talk on Haifu today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter Chu. Thank you very much. Today, I present a high-intensity focused ultrasound for prostate cancer in Asia. Multipandometric MRI is increasingly used to diagnose clinically significant prostate cancer because of its growing availability and of advances that combine anatomic and functional data. In one study, multi public MRI detected index regions in 92% of 199 patients. In another study that used MRI translator ultrasound fusion image guided biopsy in 135 patients, concordance between index region locations on biopsy and lateral prostate specimens was 95%. And 90% for primary glycine patterns between targeted biopsies and radical prostate specimens. Based on the diagnosis of clinically significant prostate cancer, focal therapy for localized prostate cancer treatment has been designed to treat significant cancer with minimal injury to the bracelet, sphincter, neurovascular bundle, and bladder neck. The European, Urology of Uro European Association of Urology considers focal therapy to represent significant progress in localized prostate cancer treatment. If long-term long -term oncological and functional outcome benefit are proven. As representative modality for focal therapy, High-intensity focused ultrasound, cryotherapy, and brachy therapy have been used based on oncological and functional outcomes confirmed in long-term follow-up after radical treatment. And these modalities were thus expected to be effective for focal therapy. But dynamic therapy and irreversible electroporation have also been reported in recent prospective clinical studies of focal therapy. High for this is an ultrasound wave generated by a spherical transducer delivering ultrasonic energy to pinpoint for the depth of just millimeters in diameter. The thermal and mechanical effect of high cause destruction of the prostate tissue. 
Only minor temperature change are observed outside of the focal zone, making it an attractive modality for focal therapy. In the present lecture, I will present our experience of region-targeted focal therapy with high food for localized prostate cancer patients in Asia in the prospective study. Patients who had been treated from 2016 to 2018 and who have TSL level with and less than 20 nanograms per ml significant prostate cancer that have been located using MRI trans elastic fusion image guided transperineal prostate biopsy and 12 core transperineal system biopsy. Life expectancy is longer than 10 years, no metastasis, no bilateral cancers with Gleason score about 7. No severe anal strictures and no previous history of treatment for localized prostate cancer were included in the present study. And these patients were in informed uh, of this procedure as an optional treatment in addition to the three standard options. Those who underwent this procedure provided informed consent. We used a 3D model of the prostate which included the significant cancer for informed consent of the focal therapy. All patients were followed up for at least one year in the present report. We performed MRI trans elastic fusion image guided target biopsy and 12 core systematic biopsy with transperineal approach. This slide shows the process of biopsy. After elastic image fusion of MRI and trust on workstation, trans transperineal a template assisted biopsy and biopsy needle tracking in 2D and 3D images is were performed. Significant cancers were defined as those with at least one core with a Gleason score of 3 plus 4 or a score of 6 with a maximum core cancer core length with a larger than 4 millimeters. I introduced our protocol of focal therapy with high. As pre-procedural management, enema has been used to prevent difficult insertion of the device pro and invisible translector ultrasound image. Just before the treatment, uh, antibiotics have been administrated intravenously. Locations of multiple electric MRI visible clinically significant prostate cancer were recorded by the partitioned regions of the prostate, which were created with the controls of the transition zone and peripheral zone and the location of the wrestler. The recorded localization of each MRI visible clinically significant prostate cancer was converted to the template and treatment planning and screen of the trust image on the workstation. And treatment range was determined. Translector focal height treatment was performed under general anesthesia. So based on the interprocedural ultrasound image, the energy output can be adjusted interoperatively. As a post-procedural management, catheter was removed within 24 hours after treatment in all patients. Hemotape was rarely used for the patient after treatment. During the follow-up of oncological outcomes, serum PSA levels were measured every three months after treatment. Managed chromatic MRI was performed two weeks and six months after treatment to evaluate treatment effect and recurrence. 
of six months old patient underwent follow up MRI transplastic fusion image cardi transperineal process biopsy of the treatment uh, area and any such region with an larger than pilot category three and 12 core transperineal systematic biopsies regardless of PSA level. Detection of process significant cancer from treated and untreated area in follow-up biopsies were defined as pathological recurrence and patient selection failure, respectively. Biochemical failure was defined as Phoenix Astro criteria. After treatment, no patient received any treatment before documented biochemical failure. Our study cohort included 90 patients. The characteristics of the patient were detailed in Table 1. The median age was 70 years, and the median PSA level was 7.26 nanogram per ml. Patient number of low, intermediate, and high risk classification were 31, 44, and 15, respectively. Perioperative data were detailed in Table 2. The median procedural and five ablation time was 39.5 minutes and 19 minutes, respectively. And median treated volume was 11.7 cc. Catheterization and hospitalization time were within 24 hours after treatment for all patients. In the present study, the treatment area was completely disvascularized on dynamic contrast MRI at two weeks after treatment and was seen on March pump MRI to have developed fibrosis at six months post-treatment and verified by pathological findings. However, Clinically significant prostate cancer was detected in the untreated area in 8.9% of the patients. These were regarded as patient selection failure. Of the, eight, nine, of the 90 patients, 7.8% were diagnosed with biochemical failure during follow-up period. Of the patients, four patients were treated with Lead focal therapy using high. Two patients were treated with radical treatment using intensely modulated radio therapy. And one patient was treated with intermittent hormonal therapy because of the need to treat as a malignancy. For one patient with positive biopsies and with PSA failure, active surveillance was performed. Lead treatment free survival and radical treatment free survival was 92% and 97% respectively. Longitudinal change is in IPSS, IPSS QOL, OABSS, maximum flow rate, and later URI and IEF5 are shown in the figure. Also IPSS, IPSS QOL, OABSS, and maximum flow rate were significantly impaired at one month after treatment compared with pretreatment value. They improved to baseline and did not significantly differ after three months of the treatment. IEF5 was significantly impaired at one and three months after treatment compared with pretreatment value, but improved to baseline at six months after treatment. Among the complications, four patients had grade two and grade three urinary tract infection one month after treatment. And three patients had grade three urethral stricture at three months after treatment. No patient experienced uh, incontinence or left urethral fistula. Among the 43 patients who had electrolyte function without PD-5 inhibitor before the treatment, the post-treatment electrolyte dysfunction rate with up TD wave 5 inhibitor over time was 14% at 12 months after treatment. Among the 43 patients who had electrolyte function, ejaculation was preserved in 70 patients present at 12 months post-treatment. 
this study had some limitations. This had a, and this was a single institutional study involving a small patient population with a short term follow up. However, present oncological results were favorably compared with previous report with short term follow up period. A large institutional prospective study will be required to analyze oncological and functional outcome of this treatment in patients with localized prostate cancer. Second, biochemical failure was evaluated using the fix after definition. However, definition was um, designed for the evaluation of biochemical failure after radiotherapy. In conclusion, focal therapy using high for localized prostate cancer based on the multiple MRI localization of clinically significant prostate cancer for patients in Asia would have similar oncological functional outcomes to those in previous results in Europa. Further, large studies are required to verify the oncological and functional outcome of this treatment for patients with organized prostate cancer. A protocol was published in Handbook of Focal Therapy for Prostate and Renal Cancer. 